Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and I finally learned how to set white balance and ISO properly on my camera. I know, miracles can happen. So today what I'd like to discuss is the right to repair bill in Nebraska and what may or may not be holding it up and what I think you should do if you are a resident of the state and you care about right to repair for rural farmers who want to be able to fix their own tractors. So as I went over on this channel about three years ago, the Nebraska Farm Bureau members voted in favor of supporting right to repair 176 to 1. So you would think that we would have had a little bit more progress over the past three years. However, in this video that I did just a few months ago, I told talked about how Nebraska farmers, in my opinion, are getting fucked. And one of the things that I mentioned in that video is that many of the politicians that are A, representing districts where there are a lot of rural farmers, and B, were endorsed by the Nebraska Farm Bureau voted against the bill. And that is really interesting. Now, one of the things that I went over in a recent video is that the attorney general of the state of Nebraska actually went over many of the concerns of one of the senators that voted against the bill in spite of being endorsed by the Farm Bureau and in spite of representing rural farmers. That was Senator Julie Slama. So the attorney general went over just about all of our concerns and explained why they don't actually really have relevance here, why those are not real concerns. And he wrote about a 15 page paper and we went over it in this video. And I will also leave a link down below to the attorney general's response. Now, in spite of that, there is a rumor, and to be clear at this time, this is just an unconfirmed rumor, that this particular senator will still be voting no against this bill next week and might even pull a filibuster to try to keep this bill from actually getting a vote. And I think there's a couple of things that we need to go over here in the case that this actually occurs. The first is that the way that things will change is if you toss the people that do this stuff out. And this is really party independent at this point in time. We live in very divided political times where many people are just not willing to vote for somebody who has a particular letter next to their name. One thing that I point out on this channel on a regular basis is that it doesn't particularly matter. We've been laughed out of the legislature by members of all parties, whether it is people like Ernie Chambers literally laughing at us as a Democrat, people like C.T. Wilson that claimed that, the, that racists support this bill because people were explaining to him that his understanding of intellectual property and source code, after he said that open source software will lead to viruses, is fundamentally wrong. Or we are talking about rural Republicans, like the ones that I mentioned in this video that have voted against the bill in spite of representing farmers. Or we're talking about people like um, a, a senator that is against right to repair because he used to own a car dealership and he's against you being able to fix your own stuff. And it, members of both parties have crapped on this many times. And one of the things that I've heard people say is, in one of these districts, just what would happen, hypothetically speaking, if for just one term, there was just a clean sweep and somebody voted differently? What if a Republican won C.T. Wilson's district? What if a Democrat won Senator Julie Slamas? And at some point, I think there is a little bit of trolling going on here to try and convince people that maybe it would just be worth it to try out somebody else. So one of the things you'll note in the Nebraska Farmers Are Getting F'd Here's How video is that Every single person that actually voted in favor of it, besides one or two, were urban Democrats that probably have never seen a tractor, much less a farm in their life. They represent city districts, and they're voting for a farmer's right to repair bill. Yet the people that actually represent the districts that have rural farmers, that have been endorsed by the Nebraska Farm Bureau, are the politicians that are voting no against it. Now, here's the thing that's really important. If Senator Julie Slama gave her list of reasons for not supporting the bill, and the Attorney General directly refutes those reasons and goes over why those are not real, and she still votes against the bill and filibusters it, the question must be asked, what are the real reasons that she's voting against it? What are her real interests? Because clearly, if the Attorney General goes over every single one of her interests and says these are not really that important, this is not really an actual issue, and her constituents care about right to repair, but she's not really interested in the constituents, then the question must be asked, why? Now, one of the problems here when it comes to politics is in the absence of communication, people tend to assume the worst. And to be honest with you, given modern politics, I don't blame them. There are many different reasons. But if we hear a repeat of the exact same reasons that she gave before getting a response from the Attorney General and nothing changes and she votes against the bill or filibusters it, I think it'll be kind of obvious to most people here 
what's actually going on. And I think a lot more digging should be done at that point into why this is happening. Why is it around the country that when I lobby in favor of these bills, people who were endorsed by the Farm Bureau or directly employed by a Farm Bureau in that particular state try to have agriculture removed from the bill or just vote it down entirely? It's a question that I think must be asked. And the next question that also must be asked is, is it worth it to continue voting for somebody simply because they have the correct letter next to their name if they're going to routinely vote against your actual interests, whether it's a D, an L, an I, or an R? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm very interested to see how this vote is going to go next week. I am genuinely interested in following this because, again, if there are some new reasons that come to light to vote against it, we can talk back and forth. We can have a conversation about that. However, if this bill gets voted down or filibustered with essentially what is nothing more than a copy and paste of the initial complaint that has been addressed by the attorney general, who I imagine has just a little bit more legal knowledge than this particular senator, then we really do have to start digging in and figure out what is it that is going on. And one of the things that I think would be really interesting in some of these cases, I mean, just what would happen if a Republican or Libertarian became governor or mayor of New York City? What would happen if a Democrat actually won a rural farming district for once? What would happen if there was just a clean sweep? Even if they wouldn't necessarily agree on everything, once you actually win after 20 or 30 or 50 years of constantly losing, you may actually find that that party has a reason to listen to the concerns of people in that district. If you assume that you're always going to lose a particular demographic or section of the population, then it's easy to simply write off their concerns. But what would happen if everybody just switched on a dime and just voted for somebody differently? Just for one go around, just for the hell of it. Would things actually have some sort of potential to change? Would that group of politicians now actually have an incentive structure just in the short term to keep the streak going to actually have an open conversation with their constituents, even if they don't necessarily agree on anything? Me personally, I think anything is better than this style of politics, where you have people claim that they support this group of people and this, that, and the other, and then routinely vote against their interests, and then just in time for election time, put up some ads talking about how they support them or whatever, showing them out in a field or something. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something, and I'm definitely going to be interested in watching what happens with this bill this week, who votes for it and against it, who filibusters it, who tries to move it through, but above all, who they claim to be supporting and who claims to support them. These are going to be very, very important. I think every Nebraska farmer should pay attention to what goes on over the next week so that they know who their true friends are. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.